Welcome, race fans! I'm Jen, and I'm so happy to see all of you here today. We have a high-octane thrill ride of a day planned for you here at our Pink K Online. We're talking about how we should be driven with our relationship with Jesus, and that means we should be driven by integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. It means that you live your life in a truthful way, wherever you are and whatever you do. I mean, sometimes in life, we might be tempted to act differently depending on who's around us. Sometimes it might seem like we can get ahead by not telling the whole truth. But integrity means that we choose to live truthfully no matter what. So, why driven? Well, you see, when it comes to cars, it's what's inside that matters the most. A car can be absolutely perfect on the outside, but if the engine isn't well cared for, then it won't run. And who wants a car that can't drive? That's the whole purpose of a car, is to move you around. And if you can't move, well, I mean, it's useless. And do you know who is the ultimate example of being in excellent running order on the inside and choosing to be truthful in whatever they said and did? That's right, Jesus. He taught us about integrity and what it means to live each day in a truthful way. And his word, the Bible, he gave us an excellent example of how to do that. So let's worship together and then watch. All right, we got a big job to do again. Oh, hello there! I'm MC Haggis, world's greatest Scottish rapper, and this here is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Give him a sample, Seamus. <laughs> Whoa! There is not a beat that can't be boxed by that man right there, right? You wrap it up, put a bow on it, and go ding-dong, special delivery. Yay! This is the month of integrity, choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. You know, me and Seamus are making quite a name for ourselves in the music industry, you know, right? Hey, hey, hey. As a matter of fact, the famous rap producer, JP Diggity Flavor Dog, yeah, he's interested in signing us and wants us to come up with a bio to put online. Now, JP Diggity Flavor Dog sent us samples of the bios of other artists he produces for us to use as samples. So, here. <clears throat> You keep writing out our bio here. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. And I'm going to look at these other samples that we were given, all right? And compare our numbers, all right? Let's, uh, all right? So let's see. The largest crowd this artist has ever performed in front of is 10,000 people. Wow. Okay. For us, you wrote down. T Ooh. Uh, <laughs> it's a little less. It's just a little less. So, okay. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> let's look at some more. Okay. This artist's last album sold. 500,000 copies <laughs> are sold. Ours sold? It's sold? Uh, uh, we, we really don't judge our success on album sales. <laughs> hey! Yeah, right? right hey! Right. Yeah. Okay, let's see this other person here. Their total concert ticket sales were three. That's a lot of zeros. Hey. We're gonna need a lot more zeros. Should we fake it? Hey. But we can't lie, Seamus. We can't just make up things that aren't true. Hey. Well, but it doesn't matter if these guys are making up the numbers themselves. It doesn't mean it's right for us to do that. Where's the integrity in that? You know what? I got it. Let's rap about it. Kick it. Hey. God made you who you are meant to be and wants you to live truthfully, which makes it pretty clear to see you best choose to be truthful in whatever you say and do. That's integrity. Word. <laughs> hey, let me see. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm looking at this guy's numbers again, and they're a lot closer to our numbers than I thought. Yeah. Oh, no. They're, they're not close at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're not close at all, that's like. Hey RPK, our basic truth this weekend is I can trust God no matter what. Doesn't that make you wanna just sing wherever you go? Our bottom line today reminds us that we need to be truthful with our whole lives. Now this can be hard, but remember that he is good when there's nothing good in us. Let's stand up and sing together. He's not against me. 
God, thank you that wherever we go, we can sing out loud because you are with us. Oh, we are so grateful for that. We just want to praise you today. We want to worship you today. We want to love you and let everyone we know how amazing you are. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about integrity while we take a look at the tale of two trees. Hmm, I wonder if either tree has a tire swing. Hmm. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about integrity, which is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. So what's up with the tire? My dad got a flat tire. See the nail right here? I mean, we can try to uh, pull it. You want some help? Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, it's like Excalibur. That's not coming out. <sighs> What's it doing in here? I figured we can use it for something. Tire swing. <laughs> Dog bed. <laughs> Workout equipment. Uh, oh, come on, you can do it. I don't come think on. I can do you it. You got it. Getting ripped. Our guest today knows his way around a tire. In fact, he's an expert on cars. Seriously? So cool. Yeah, his name is Mike, and he's a mechanic who lives in Ontario. Well, when do we get to meet him? Right now. Hi, Mike. We are so excited to have you on the show with us today. Hey, guys. Pleasure to be here. So we're going to ask you a couple of questions today, Mike. But first, we know you're a mechanic, but... What does a mechanic actually do? Well, just like a doctor, you know, takes care of the body, and make sure, you know, you're healthy when you're sick. I am kind of like a car doctor. I take care of cars, and I make sure when they're not working well, I get them back up to speed. Okay, so how did you get interested in working with cars? Well, it kind of has started as a kid. I've always been interested in small motors and fixing and repairing things. And as a kid, I loved fixing bikes. How did you get started as a mechanic? <laughs> Well, I actually started at a dealership when I, when I first wanted to be a mechanic. I was fixing cars, but over time, they wanted us to, you know, I felt the pressure to make repairs that really customers didn't really need and do things that, you know, it's not really needed or the customer didn't really want it. So I just didn't feel comfortable that way. And I actually had somebody tell me that I had to be one person at the dealership and one person at home. And that wasn't okay with me. So I left and I went to a smaller shop. Here, I get to take care of the customers. I do exactly what they want and exactly what we say we're going to do. I do quality work and they're satisfied. So Mike, we can see that you're kind of at a shop right now. So tell me about some of the things that you guys are working on right now. What type of cars? What are you doing to the inside? Just, just give me those details. We get to work on everything here at our shop from small cars to trucks, so lawnmowers. Right now, I'm working on this car sitting right here. The customer wants me to make sure that their car is working exactly as it should. So I will check things like here, this is the air filter, where I would make sure that the car's air filter is clean and the engine can breathe. And here, this is the dipstick where the engine oil goes in. It's like the lifeblood of the engine. If it's not good, the engine will not work well. And also, the battery. This is a very essential part of the car. You have to make sure that the battery's in good working order and these connections are nice and tight. Because if they're not, the car may not even start at all. Can you talk more about what it takes to get a car to run really, really well? The best part of it all is you have to take care of what's on the inside. If you don't, Eventually, the car will break down and maybe not even work at all. So, Mike, we know you love working on cars, but we gotta ask, what is your favorite kind of car? Classic cars and hot rods. I absolutely love them. When I'm driving down the road with my kids, we make it a game to pick them out, point them out, check the colors, and really just love the sound of the old hot rods. These cars are awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Your job is so awesome, and it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks, guys. Wow, it's like I've got a whole new perspective on what's inside. 
Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in the book of Luke. When God sent Jesus as a baby, angels announced his birth. But for most of his life, Jesus lived quietly and faithfully, loving God and loving others. Around the time Jesus was 30 years old, he came to the Jordan River. God's voice spoke from heaven. You are my son, and I love you. I am very pleased with you. Soon after, Jesus began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. He chose a group of friends to share life with him. In everything Jesus said and did, he showed people what God is like. And over and over, he pointed out that what's on the inside matters most to God. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. And in today's story, well, <laughs> things are gonna get a bit thorny. <clears throat> Jesus had just chosen his 12 closest friends to help in his work. And when he came down from the mountain with them, a big crowd gathered. People had come from all over to hear him and be healed. Jesus did make many people well, but he knew that even more than their bodies, it was the people's hearts that needed help. So Jesus began to teach them many things. A good tree doesn't bear bad fruit. And a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit. Uh, well, that makes sense, right? I mean, if you go up to a nice, healthy apple tree and pick one. Mm. But if you find a tree that looks twisted and stunted and pick some fruit, ah, you're not going to want to bite of that. Jesus continued with the word pictures. You can tell each tree by the kind of fruit it bears. People do not pick figs from thorns, and they don't pick grapes from bushes. In the time of Jesus, figs and grapes were a super important part of what people ate. Figs represented peace and prosperity, and grapes stood for joy and celebration. Finding a good grapevine or fig tree was a big deal. But when Jesus and his friends walked the dusty roads, they would have seen other plants too, including thorny, bushy hedgerows and fig trees choked out by brambles. I mean, are you going to find grapes or figs on one of these? No, I think not. It quickly became clear to the crowd, though, that Jesus was talking about more than just trees and vines. A good man says good things. These come from the good that is stored up in his heart. An evil man says evil things. These come from the evil that is stored up in his heart. A person's mouth says everything that is in their heart. Mic drop. A healthy apple tree produces great fruit, and an unhealthy tree grows bad fruit. They do it without even trying. And we are just the same. If we are in a healthy place, connected to Jesus, good things will come out of us. Our words and actions will reflect Jesus and be encouraging and helpful to others. But when we try to make it on our own, we get more and more stressed out and grumpy. Like an unhealthy tree grows rotten fruit, our words and actions are more likely to spew out and hurt the people around us. Who you are and how you're doing inside will always come out. You might be able to cover up and pretend everything's great for a while, but eventually, the pressure of trying to keep it together will just be too much. You'll end up saying and doing hurtful things, even if you don't mean to. So clearly, we want to be this and not that. Here's the good news. You get to choose which kind of tree you want to be. The night before he was arrested and gave up his life, Jesus told his friends, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain joined to me and I to you, you will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. Boom, there it is, that's the key. Like a branch has to be connected to the vine or tree trunk to survive, we were designed for connection to Jesus. And when we're regularly learning more about Jesus and talking with him, things start to change inside. Over time, we become like good branches growing trees, growing good fruit. Now, being a good tree does not mean that you'll never say or do something hurtful, but it does mean that most of the time, your words and actions will be loving. And when you mess up, you can take it right to Jesus and ask for help. After all, you and every single person you meet are made in God's image. And when you follow Jesus, you can be confident that you will become a good tree, growing good fruit. The end. Okay, so if I were a tree, what would I grow? Hmm. 
Maybe walnuts? Walnuts? Not a fruit. Yeah, but you're a little nutty. And you're a lot cheesy. The story, guys? Right. Well, whatever kind, I want to be a good tree. So what's our part in the story? Well, it starts with a choice. You don't live with integrity by accident. The journey begins by choosing to follow Jesus and then to stay connected to him. And there are lots of ways to do that. Oh, for sure. For one of the best ways is to uh, read or listen to scripture about the things Jesus did and said. Love your enemies. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let your light shine before others. My grace is all you need. My power is strongest when you are weak. Yeah, and that's just a start. You can also spend time talking with Jesus in prayer, just like you'd talk with a friend. Yeah, and that means listening, too. When you take time to be still, Jesus might give you a word or a feeling or just a sense that he's there. Even when you get distracted or mess up, that's still a great opportunity to reconnect with Jesus. There is nothing you can do that will ever make him love you less. And when you stay connected to Jesus, you can be truthful with your whole life. Yep, you got it. Mm. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Be truthful with your whole life. And stay connected to Jesus. Kind of like how Mike showed us with making sure your car battery is properly connected. So, have you decided what to do with this tire? I'm going to use it as a planter. And grow some good fruit. Or veggies. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Uh, uh, wait, come back. Runaway tire. What a great reminder for us today. And what a great bottom line. Be truthful with your whole life. Now, does that mean we're perfect? Does it mean we'll always get it right? No, we're human, which means sometimes we might mess up. We might say something that isn't 100% truthful. We might do or say something hurtful to someone because we feel angry or frustrated. Everybody messes up from time to time. But remember, if we want to live with integrity, we need to stay connected to Jesus. We know that Jesus will be there to help us live in a truthful way so that who we are on the inside will match who we are on the outside. So how do we stay connected to Jesus? What are some ways that we can stay close to him so that we can be like a good tree producing good things in our lives? Well, first you can read your Bible and learn for yourself about all the things Jesus did and said. You can do that by reading or even by listening to a Bible app. You can find all the stories and teachings of Jesus at the beginning of the New Testament in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How about prayer? That's an excellent way to grow nearer to him. You know what else? You can spend time with other followers of Jesus, like your family and friends, and talk about Jesus and what a difference he's making in your life. The more you connect with Jesus, the more you'll be able to live with integrity and be truthful both inside and out. Our memory verse for this month is Proverbs 10.9. Check this out. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Let's say that together. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Proverbs 10.9. This verse reminds us that God wants us to live with integrity, and God is always there to help us do that. Basic truth, we can trust God no matter what. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that. Oh, dear God, thank you. Thank you for helping us see how we can stay connected to you so we can be truthful with our whole life. Remind us to spend time talking to you in prayer and reading our Bible so we can be healthy on the inside and so we can live a life of love, kindness, and goodness on the outside. So please help us make wise choices and live with integrity every day. We love you and we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, friends, and let's all work together to be truthful in everything we do.